I call this video incongruities in trombone playing. That's a fancy name, but all it means is that sometimes on trombone, things don't feel like they sound. For example, if you have a beautiful slow melody, perhaps like this, even though that melody is relatively slow, my slide is moving quite fast. So it doesn't really feel like the music sounds, that's what I mean. Now if I were to move my slide too slow and try to depict the music with my slide action, you get that horrible glissando sound that we don't want to promote. So the first incongruity is even though the music might sound slow, the slide still has to move fast and precisely. The second incongruity is twofold, and it has to do with loud playing. When you play loud, you need to let your embouchure relax a little bit so you get a lot of tissue moving inside the mouthpiece. That's what creates the resonance. So if I do it right, I get a nice resonant sound. But it feels a little bit strange to do that because the music is intense and loud and that makes you want to really tighten up here. And if I tighten up like that too much, then it closes off my sound and I get less resonance like this. I get this forced tone quality which is not very pretty. Now along the same lines, oftentimes when we're called upon to play loud, we also have to play legato, and that is an unusual combination. And sometimes if you assume that your loud playing also involves staccato or harsh accents, then you're not really playing in the right style. Mahler 3 is a really good example of this. If I do it right, I'm playing big and full and loud, and I'm playing relatively legato. I'm not really punching the notes with my tongue too much. And if I use more tongue, that is too much tongue, I get nasty. So it really depends on the style. Yes, of course, there are moments when you will need to use a little more tongue or you might need a little more accent, but it should not necessarily be your default. It really depends upon the style. This next incongruity has to do with expressive playing. Now we all want to sound expressive, <clears throat> however, sometimes when you create that feeling inside your body, then it feels expressive, but it doesn't sound very good. And a good example of that is what some people like to call diaphragm vibrato, where you puff the air in order to create a vibrato, something like this. Now that might feel very musical because you can feel the movements inside your body, <clears throat> but it's not a very even and beautiful tone. And I get this sound a lot from trombonists who have also had some background being taught how to sing because singers do create their vibrato in a different way, but you can't apply that technique to trombone playing because it doesn't sound good. The better way to do it is to use embouchure or jaw vibrato, which sounds like this. puffing the ear when I do that, and 
that's good. You don't want to puff the air. If you have a background in singing and you come to the trombone, try to separate the two techniques because the singing vibrato is one technique and trombone vibrato is a different technique. <clears throat> Just one more incongruity and that is when you have to enter on a soft note. The way that it feels like you should do that is to sneak in with your air, rather like a, a, a choir, where all the vocalists can kind of sneak in, but it sounds good because they're all together. And the problem with doing that on trombone is the following possibility. You could get this sound. You get that puff of air before the note starts. Well, that, the reason that happens is that you're trying to depict the music with your breathing. And that's the incongruity that I'd like to point out. Now, I'm all for depicting the music. Of course, you need to play musically. But when that depiction interrupts your technique, then you're in trouble. So the answer is you need to think of every note starting with the air at speed. So in other words, you don't start the air slowly and then get up to speed. You have to start the note at speed with your air. I call this throwing darts, because if I were to puff the air for you and depict a dart throw, it would be like this. So when you release that dart, You've got to propel it towards the bullseye at speed, like that. And if you were to just lay it out there as though you were sneaking in with your air, the dart's just going to go down. And that's exactly what's happening to your note. So the note needs air right from the very beginning, whether or not the note is loud or soft or anywhere in between. So here's what it sounds like when I do it right. I'll throw a few darts with no sound first. So you can hear the air is at speed right from the beginning of the note. And you can do that as soft as you need to, but what you can't do is think to yourself, okay, I'm going to gradually get the air up to speed. You'll never get a good clean attack that way. 